Hey everyone, it's Paul with the Tuesday Bull Profits for this week. So this week, I want to start out with a few things that I'll probably be repeating at the beginning of many of my videos in the future. And that's because of a number of things that are going on associated with my name, the service, comments that I've gotten on YouTube. Uh, and so let me just get right to it. So the first thing I want to tell folks that are watching is that uh, this channel is not investment advice. Uh, investment advice, just for those who understand, means that somebody's actually looking at your personal situation, understands your personal uh, financial picture, your income, your risk level, uh, all of these things that take into account something from your particular personal perspective. And this channel just by its very nature is general uh, and is simply really here to, for me to talk about investment ideas, investment strategies in a informational, educational way, in a way that looks to engage you, interest you. And it's also secondarily there to tell you about, to promote even uh, our investment newsletters from my publisher, which is called Bull Profits, which is also owned uh, uh, in a, uh, by a, a bigger publisher that is called Banyan Hill. And that is the purpose of this, this channel and the videos that we do, whether it be me or my amazing colleague, Amber Lancaster, or my incredible colleague, Ian Dyer, or other members of our team, this is the purpose of the channel. So I just wanna make that clear. And I know that many of you will be thinking like, whoa, Paul, we, we don't need to be told this. However, uh, I do get enough messages in the comments that suggest that people misunderstand the purpose of this channel. Uh, the second thing is also super important because I continue to get reports that uh, there are robots, bots, artificial intelligence, just scams, frauds that are using my picture, using my name to try and get money out of you, Bitcoin out of you. And I can tell you one thing, which is that we will never be asking you for money uh, in that kind of way. All of our services are investment newsletter subscriptions. You would need a credit card to be able to pay for it. So no one from our team for our publisher is ever going to ask you to send money through any social media app like WhatsApp or, or Facebook or, or, or Twitter or Snapchat or, or any of these social media apps. If you're being approached by anyone asking you to send you money, it is a scam, it is a fraud, it is designed specifically to take money out of you and you will never ever get that back. So please avoid interacting with anyone that approaches you for money. And there are a lot of these things going on in the YouTube comments. And I can see that a number of people are taking these approaches seriously and thinking that it is actually me. So once, so once again, any approach asking you to send money, cash, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, or anything else like that is a scam and a fraud. We sell subscription services. If you're invited to subscribe to something by email, most of the time, that's the way that we do it. Sometimes we also have ads, uh, including on, on, on YouTube, on Facebook, on, on the internet. Uh, they will ask you to put a credit card to buy something that's an investment newsletter subscription. So that's point number two. The third thing that I want to also make clear is that any investment ideas that I talk about in these videos is intended to be for a long period of time. Uh, I feel that there has been a misunderstanding that many people think that I'm providing day trading advice or something where an idea is going to come to fruition like this, perhaps in a day or, uh, or maybe at most a few days. And I am gonna say that anything that I talk about, any investment idea or even strategies that I bring up, these are designed to take months, perhaps even years to come to fruition. So if you're looking for very, very short-term ideas, this is in all likelihood the wrong channel to be following uh, for those kinds of uh, information. Uh, there are a lot of channels out there that are doing day trading uh, advice and talking about technical analysis and these kinds of things. And we largely never talk about that. What we focus on is big mega trends, 
Uh, often they're related to technology and innovation. Uh, they're also related to changes in society, demographic changes in society. For example, we talk about the rise of the millennial generation and the generation after them, Gen Z, that's coming right after them. So we might talk about new brands or, or things like that, consumer trends that are in there. Um, and that is our exclusive focus. And we approach it from the perspective of demand and supply, which we refer to as going upness. And then the last thing I'll say is that we guide people to money management rules that we refer to rules of the game. And there are videos on all of these things on our YouTube channel. So please just track back to these things and, and, and check them out so that you get the most out of uh, this channel, and also to the extent that we are not fulfilling on what you're looking for, uh, that you can find a channel that really provides you the information that you're looking for. All right, in this week's video, I wanna cover transportation. Uh, if you think about our transportation, cars, buses, trucks, planes, Largely, if you really think back to it, these are anywhere between 50, 70, nearly 100 years old in terms of when they first came into existence. And most people obviously know what a car is, have traveled by bus somewhere or the other. Um, planes, lots and lots of people have traveled by, a few people may have even traveled by helicopters. And thing is that there's been very little actual innovation in the transportation sector for a very, very long period of time. The basic thing of a car is more or less what it was 50 years ago. Sure, there's been refinements. Uh, yes, the fuel efficiency has gone up. The reliability has gone up. Nonetheless, the car is more or less still a car. It has four wheels, it has an engine, and it does what it does. Uh, the same thing is true for planes. So today I want to cover actually transportation innovation and a trend that is unfolding right now in, in aviation. And many of you may have seen this, uh, which is that there is now a huge, huge new industry that is budding to replace what I will call the old airline industry, which is pretty old, uh, has been around a great deal, and it doesn't really give us anything additional than what it has been for at least 15, 20 years. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about innovation in the transportation sector, particularly as it, as it relates to aviation. So if you look at this one article from CNBC, it says, why one big Wall Street banker is betting flying taxis will replace helicopters. And um, it, in the key points, it says, the urban air mobility electric aircraft market, also referred to as flying taxis, could grow to twice the size of the current civilian helicopter fleet. And then it says vertical takeoff and landing electric aircraft startup Archer went public last week in a deal that's led by Wall Street investment bank, Comolis. And then it also says that United Airlines announced a $1 billion deal with the startup last week to buy 200 electric vertical takeoff and lift Archer aircraft, which is one of many corporate investors. So in the article, it talks about some of the benefits of these eVTOL aircraft. Um, this comes from, from Molis, the banker, uh, and says, these vehicles will be 100 times quieter, they will be significantly safer, and they'll be significantly cleaner and significantly cheaper. So, so four significant benefits of the coming innovation in, in aviation. In other words, we're gonna have aviation choices that are quieter, safer, cleaner, and cheaper. And that's very much in the nature of innovation. It provides and delivers on these kinds of things. And if you go and look, uh, Archer, as the one that I mentioned, here is a picture of what Archer looks like. You'll see this looks a little bit like a drone and that is in many ways what the new picture of, uh, of aviation innovation looks like. And there are other companies like Archer as well that are doing similar things. Here's a picture of, uh, of Joby Aviation. And you can once again see that they also look quite similar. It's a drone that's, got, uh, that's uh, powered by electricity and it has the ability to have vertical takeoff and lift. Uh, another company that is in the same area is Lilium, 
and you can see they're almost sci-fi looking like uh, like EV tall aircraft, uh, super cool looking. And uh, Lilium is also making big plans to be out there. And the last one I want to show you is Volocopter. And uh, this one you can see has some similarities uh, to uh, both drones as well as helicopters. So one of the big things that is going on as well is where this innovation is likely to go first. And you'll see that if you look at this article, uh, this comes from Air Cargo News. And I, I tend to get a lot of my news actually from these trade journals. You'll see that it says drones are back on the agenda for air cargo. And there's a reason for this, which is that freight rates by plane and truth even by ship are skyrocketing high post the pandemic because there's simply insufficient capacity to load up everything that we need into the ships as they currently stand. And so people are looking at innovation and alternatives like these kinds of EV tall aircraft, either for short range or eventually for even medium range. It's too early for long range. And there's additional developments in there. You'll see in this article, uh, UPS says they plan to purchase up to 150 electric cargo aircraft. Um, so UPS is obviously a very large company and heavily involved in the delivery business. And you can also see new, completely new companies that plan to just completely go all in on this particular innovation. And this article, as you can see, refers to a company called Dronamics, which is launching a drone-based cargo airline. So they are going to completely skip out on using planes and go straight to actually using uh, EV tow aircraft. And um, Dronamics has a, a EV tow aircraft that's called Black Swan, which can carry 350 kilograms of cargo up to 2,500 kilometers at an 80% lower cost than any aircraft. In other words, it is really uh, can deliver on um, on, on the promise of this innovation. So many of you may be thinking, wow, gosh, Paul, you know, recommend uh, Lilium or Archer or Joby Aviation or Volocopter. We want to make money. It's all going to happen. And the truth is, is that there are some sectors where innovation, while it looks very beautiful uh, to look at, is going to take some time to unfold. And here's why. Any aircraft has to be certified by the government to be able to fly. And even once they're certified, they then have to get permission to fly over certain aerospace uh, because these aircraft are still new, people are nervous about it. Uh, then there's obviously existing aircraft that are out there. So you have to find sort of room for these to travel safely where they're obviously uh, not a danger to regular people or to existing aircraft. So my point is, is that this innovation is going to unfold slowly over time. It's unlikely to unfold in a day or a week or a month or even a year. This is going to take some number of years to unfold. And it will first be a small thing, then become a slightly bigger thing. And then just like the airline business, which today we take for granted, it took 30, 40, 50 years to unfold. And in all likelihood, this will take yeah, probably five or 10 or maybe 15 years. However, there are ways that you can actually get in on this because it's clear whether it be from the United Airlines order for Archer Aviation's aircraft or uh, UPS's order or Dronamics telling you that they can really deliver uh, a lot of weight very cheaply, that there is a genuine business that is here and there's a genuine business model that is going to be created around it. However, uh, there's going to be some bumps along the way, and it's never going to be quite clear which of these companies are going to be successful. There may be new competitors that come in because it's so new. So what's the way to actually invest in it? Well, one of the ways that you can do it is to just think about what is in these EV tall aircraft. And when I look at it, I see a lot of chips, a lot of sensors. Uh, in other words, computer chips, that's what's driving these. These are largely expected to be autonomous, and they certainly are all completely electron electronically controlled in terms of how you would operate it. So one of the easiest ways that you can actually invest in this is to buy into 
computer chips. And one of the ways that you can do that is by buying an exchange traded fund, which has an entire basket portfolio of computer chips. And in all likelihood, at least one of those companies are going to be serving this market and are going to see the benefit of a lot of orders for these computer chips to benefit from that. So uh, the ETF uh, that I have recommended for semiconductors for chips uh, has been SMH, that's the ticker symbol, SMH. It is a, it's got a broad number, broad portfolio of, of chips and uh, chip companies and chip stocks in it. And that is one way that you can look to play on this very new and exciting and large trend. Uh, because uh, transport and freight and even passenger travel, these are very large, large industries that are valued in the billions of dollars. And then there's a second way that many people would probably not be thinking about in terms of how to benefit from this. And that is through 3D printing. Because I can tell you, if you went to Joe B Aviation or Archer Aviation or Lilium um, or, or any of these or Dronamics or any of these companies, they are using 3D printing to come up with either the parts or else to print a significant part of these drones together. And so this is a secret way to get into this innovation and in truth, many different innovations, including space and others. And the way that we have told you to get into 3D printing, if you are looking to sort of benefit from this new, new industry that is coming up is to buy into an ETF called P, which has the ticker symbol PRNT, PRNT, which is the ARC Innovation 3D Printing ETF. The other alternative is that you can subscribe to our services um, where we have 3D printing as a big, enormous, major theme. We believe that 3D printing is going to revolutionize the world of making things. And this is a great example of it. In other words, the reason why these aircraft are cheaper is because they use 3D printed parts. And 3D printing, you can make them easier, make them cheaper, make them safer. Um, they, they require a lot less expense. And as a result, um, you get all of these benefits in uh, sort of coming together in what you make. And so in our services, uh, we have 3D printing companies like 3D Systems, Stratasys, Proto Labs. We have smaller companies uh, in 3D printing that are really all across our services. As I like to tell our readers, we're all in on 3D printing across everywhere. We believe that this is a transformational, revolutionary technology that is going, that is changing the world, not going to change, is changing the world. So you're interested in that, the cheapest, easiest way for you to get started in terms of seeing these ideas is Profits Unlimited. That's my flagship newsletter. It goes for $47, I believe is the offer that will be in the link. If you click on profitsunlimited.com, there's a link down below. If you just want to go to the internet and type it in profitsunlimited.com, that initial deal, I believe is for $47, something like that. So that's my uh, video uh, and idea for you this week. The coming transformation uh, of the aviation market as a result of these electric vertical takeoff and lift aircraft. I believe it is going to completely, completely obliterate the current aviation industry in time and is going to represent a major, huge growth sector for obviously business and also the stocks. However, it will be an up and down thing as uh, these technologies and companies vet themselves out. And so the easy way to get into it is to buy into chips. And I mentioned ETF that and to buy into 3D printing. And I mentioned an ETF for that. So if you like this video, give this video a thumbs up. Tell me what you think of this idea below. Subscribe to this channel and I'll have another one of these for you next week. Until then, this is Paul saying bye.